in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes. I just sense the Lord just imparting graces. Just pray in the spirit for a minute or two. He's brooding over every dark. You are causing light. You are brooding there over every dark. You are causing light to shine from the. You are brooding over. You are causing light to shine from One more time. Darkness. You are brooding, you are brooding over, over every darkness. darkness. Yeah. You are causing light to shine from darkness. You are Causing light to shine from darkness. Holy Spirit, bless you. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Mighty God strong and mighty in the midst of our people we bless you and receive that which you have for us Em brata katola pratis, e gababara to sadabra, ke labrosa de barunda sheba. We've come to the wrong. Draw from you again. Yeah. Yeah. We've come to draw. We've come to draw. 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 Draw from you again. Yeah. Yeah. I've come to draw.
Ye na 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 na. Ye na 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 na. Ye ye ye. You reign. You reign. Hello. You reign from everlasting to everlasting. You are God, you are King, and King alone. You reign, you reign. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. The Lord is lifting you. Don't be distracted. Whether you are in the overflow outside online, don't be distracted. There are spiritual transactions going on. Taking away limitations, taking away limitations, taking away limitations. Barunsh Kabaruda Zinakata, that this proverb will no longer be heard in Israel. It will no longer be Ikabo. Zato Shabrendeko Salabra Atisina Asiakata. Please don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Be focused on Jesus. Don't be distracted. Let your eyes be like a flint. Haruda si brada gada bala koshi. Ibarush. Shebalitia. Shedalush. Kenadus. Salabarus. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess. But be ye filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Alabarus, Shalaban, Heradus, Egredu, Zezeneka, Parush, Yakata, Lato, Zetiana, Haskabadish. Rentos kaba ijadaba lato sabrande gedi baratu siata katash. Just soak in the glory. Let the atmosphere of heaven rest upon your life, rest upon your pain, rest upon your disappointment. Rest upon your heart, your mind, and produce a result for you that only God can produce. Mm, yeah. You're not wasting your time. This is part of the meeting. Very deep spiritual experience is going on. Arusia, Radusia, Skip, 
I continue to allow this because of what I see in the spirit. God is working things in people's lives. God is fixing things in people's lives. Birthing things in people's lives. Depositing graces. Depositing possibilities. Depositing abilities. Everywhere be connected in the spirit. Overflow one, two, and three. Baratus Just a few minutes and we're done. You don't rush the glory. When his glory is made manifest, you maximize the moment. When he comes, it's a holy convocation. He comes to bless, he comes to lift. Just use the next two minutes. Allow your spirit man find expression. Please allow your spirit man find expression. the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear please speak from your heavens and the earth will hear speak from the heavens and I'll hear from the earth my altar is called in you oh God my altar is called in My sacrifice is called in you, oh God. And my worship is called in you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise. Oh Let the fire from your altar touch my body. 
Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your Take me to the place, the place you are, the secret place, that's where I want to be. Will you take us to the place, the place you are? And there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Yeshua Hamashiach, kominanakane, kominanakane, ya Yesu, kominanakane, kominanakane, Yeshua. Just, just be still in his presence and just allow the spirit of the living God perfect. You cannot imagine what God is doing in your life. Just a minute or two and we're done. This is what a conference should look like. We're not acting. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised, my one desire is that you be praised, that you be praised. Thank 
you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the making. Thank you for the making. We honor you. We bless you. Be glorified tonight. Bless our hearts. Let your word prevail over our lives. Anoint us. Give us something that we will serve our generation with. We vow to give you the glory. We vow to give you the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated if you can. You see, you must never get to a point in your life where you become insensitive to the leadings, the dealings of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that the remaining days will be very strong moments of encounter, impartation, and it will be an opportunity for us to hear him and to listen. And let me, let me encourage every one of you just be focused forget about what is happening at your left and right this is not a corporate meeting now this is you and god who can change your life whatever the holy ghost is doing in and through the lives of people around you just focus you came for an encounter thank you jesus So beginning from tonight and into tomorrow, the spirit of the living God is going to be shifting us into realms, dimensions, phases, levels in the spirit. God loves everyone, but all men are not the same. It is not true. While you are here this night, just soaking in this glory. You don't have to be manifesting under the anointing as you see. Just the atmosphere is doing something to you and shifting you with a new strong ability. Some of you, especially those of you who are men of God, is when you return back to your churches, you will see the wonder of God's power and of his grace. hallelujah so from tonight and then tomorrow and we'll wrap up with the miracle service i will be teaching on the matters that have to do with spiritual power hosting the power of god psalm 92 and verse 10 hosting the power of god In every generation, there always seems to be men and women who carry very, very superior levels of spiritual power. Here and there, you have wonderful, honest, sincere preachers, sincere believers, but it seems that out of the crowd, God will pick one two or three persons and all through the lifetime of that generation they will be mightily anointed mightily anointed you know we read of many of these people in the bible and in modern history we have a name that we call them we call them the generals of faith or god's generals you know 
there are all kinds of experiences that we have and we talk about these men and women of course and it looks like something happened along the line and we completely lost touch with genuine spiritual power and we replaced please listen we replaced power genuine power with a lot of noise we replace spiritual power with what the bible calls the philosophies of men old wives fables meaningless pointless spiritual discussions that cannot change men so people will come to church and sit under a supposed atmosphere and regardless of the beauty the decoration and everything that happens and the series and series of teachings their lives never change listen carefully their situations never change they stand helpless in the face of darkness helpless in the face of all kinds of things and then while all this is going on we continue to make noise jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever we continue to brag i'm a man of god apostle joshua selman anointed and so on and so forth whereas absolutely nothing is happening in the lives of the people and most times we say they don't have faith i've told you it's a lie it's not true the faith to leave their house and come is enough it is not a faith problem i tell you this it is that we have not learned the ways of god to understand the anointing and please don't think i'm just teaching this for preachers so that you think oh i'm not a man of god i'm a business person no 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 the anointing was not designed for preachers the anointing was designed for everyone and everyone who will be a witness a testament of the reality of the life of god when jesus walked the earth the bible says in acts chapter 10 peter speaking in the house of cornelius and verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil he says for god was with him i've said this if our generation does not stay with the holy spirit to gain true spiritual power the days that come our churches will remain empty in the days of the generals there were no internet so if you were not in church there were not many other things you could do but right now there are all kinds of options and god must be so glorified to make every other thing look unnecessary when he's there let every other name fade away that's what we need to do let every other name fade away jesus take your place that when he shows up your browsing becomes unnecessary whatever else he, he compels your attention it's amazing how distracted people can be even in church because of the level of powerlessness a man can actually spend a full service discussing business while a message is going on and there is nothing from that message to touch his life exchanging phone numbers exchanging text messages browsing and laughing and playing and the man is sweating on stage and absolutely nothing is happening absolutely no conviction no focus no direction no encounters we sell our teachings we give our messages we put pressure on people to fill their phones with our teachings and they listen to it from a to z and nothing happens is why members are angry 
because they have been in church for a very very long time and nothing has happened that's why they keep suspecting the ministers because the grace cannot come on any other person no other person has stayed in that place and carried tangible grace the workers are powerless members powerless friends powerless and yet we continue to write volumes of books about the anointing we produce cds about the anointing something is seriously wrong and if our generation does not retrace back what is the ancient part what have we missed you know honestly let me tell you this you know i love the body of christ when i listen to people talk about the holy spirit and the anointing sometimes I just nod my head while I just watch the television. I say, Kai, oh God, how did we lose this? Just pray in one minute and say, Lord, restore. Restore the patterns. Restore ancient patterns of true spiritual power. Ancient patterns, doorways that allow the Holy Spirit to find full expression within a generation. Are you praying? Tonight's service is an unusual one focus pray restore ancient patterns praise the lord are we together listen and so we get to a point where the people can never truly experience god listen to me god for many people is theory we have created philosophies around him you know music ministers write all kinds of songs and they are not even afraid to sing it songs that are supposed to be powerful and yet the people who write them is clear they are not listening to what they are singing there are songs that should not end until what you are saying happens the songs were supposed to be prophetic that while you are singing it it's like i'm saying come and you don't come i get to a point where come is now like a recitation I just keep saying, come. Pastor Alpha comes. And that's Pastor Alpha standing. And he cannot come. We have blocked the space that the Holy Spirit will find in the church. With vain traditions. Vain philosophies. And the pride. The pride of this generation knows no bounds. Everybody is a man of God. Everybody is anointed. Everybody has rema. Everybody has this and that. And we continue to mentor and deceive and even destroy people. There, there are ancient pathways for true spiritual power. Please, if you're a man of God, listen to me. I know we have a conference tomorrow. But the days that are coming, members will no longer be silent. And sit indefinitely under a church, under an atmosphere that will not bless them. No. You are a music artist they invite you once and the heavens does not open you go with the closed heavens and never return for that conference again because let me tell you when you refuse to press others are moving this is not the generation where if one person doesn't move every other person sits down no no there can be a mighty church here and a beer parlor sharing the world with the first and there will even be a speaker outside and while all the jamboree is happening the people are there just sitting quietly for many years the holy spirit could not fall on one person one person Haba! nobody had a dream no vision nobody the days where people will be kilometers away from a crusade ground. Kilometers. Kilometers. The meeting has not started. Just because you passed that vicinity. Jacob, listen. There was a ladder. A place that Abraham consecrated. And power rested upon it. Jacob came and slept there. Service was over. Those who sweep churches never get blessed. With the sweep, they clean the pastor's chair, they clean the pulpit, and nothing changes in their lives. And we continue to boast, we are the most arrogant generation 
that has ever lived we talk about power we talk about so many things as if we know so much about it and there is absolutely nothing so i made up my mind that it will be wickedness to join this deception and continue to be like a fig tree with figs but no leaves we organize all kinds of programs breakthrough event this and that and that and people come and share the grace and go back the same man of god i want my life changed i stand as an anointed man in the name of jesus may your life change nothing changes any wise man should say god what is happening and yet we collect the offering and the seed that comes from that prayer and nothing happens people sow seeds listen listen to me we teach people that giving lifts people and i agree but they carry their seeds they empty their accounts they come and drop it and nothing happens members are watching they know they are getting dissatisfied their tithing doors are not opening they are sowing seeds doors are not opening in the name of jesus may this week be a bless i'm just giving an example oh may this and that happen strange open doors and nobody nobody do you know how many potential doors you pass in a week and that prophecy was not strong enough to open even one and when we come for meetings like this proud people like us sit like this while they keep clapping our father our this apostle joshua selman and instead of us to sit down and say lord compare to what compare to what and compare to who bible said they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise so what has been happening in the body of christ is you just look at a range of men of god and you gauge yourself and think i'm not bad and that becomes the basis of rest whereas there are heights my god there are dimensions where you become a blessing to the nations i sat back there when some of the pastors were sharing and i just looked at them and i said oh dear do you know what will happen to members your family members inclusive when you really host the genuine power of god Our lack of results should give us concern if you love Jesus. It's why people have the authority to write all kinds of nonsense. Because the truth is there is a dimension of God they are not seeing. There is a level of God's power that when it rests upon the body, no man will open his mouth and call the church a nuisance to civilization. Right now, when you say your name is Pastor this immediately you mention pastor people look at you as if these are the scammers and the idiots that are destroying civilization they look at pastors and church as a place of deception a place of scam and a place where people just come so that you extract money from poor people when has god become a cause no power no revelation you hear men of god teach and all you know is that is is a recycling and a copying of messages from one laptop to one laptop one program to one program no freshness pastors just sit in front of a laptop a few hours to service and just browse an article let me tell you this in the area that the anointing should function nothing will ever replace the place of genuine spiritual empowerment our generation is at stake because the level of darkness today i'm telling you this let no one lie to you 20 30 50 years ago it was not like that hell has reinvented itself the kinds of infirmity and darkness that plagues the church a day will come when it's God that will have to help us. 
that's why god is separating us to say look there is still something on the earth that we have not gotten and that we can get something that will bring glory to the name of the lord forever our prophecies are like acting our impartations are like acting people now eat communion because they didn't have food at home not because there's any power there they know that there's no power there because they've tried it and nothing worked oh this is my bread this is my blood and and almost like an occult we throw the bread and drink the the, the wine and throw away the cup and the ushers and the rest will eat the remaining bread and the cup after service and nothing happens nothing And the painful part is some of you, some of us now with our little fellowships and groups and all of that are already joining the queue in that kind of powerlessness where we just surround ourselves with a few mediocre here and there. Mm, you are prophet this, apostle this, pastor this, bishop this, so, 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 and so, and we are happy. In a class where the highest got 17%, did he pass? Although he is the highest, did he pass? We should be ashamed of ourselves as a generation and return back and say, Lord, give us something. Give us something. Give us something that will bring glory to the name of the Lord. Pray a prayer and then I share briefly and say, Lord, put an anointing a genuine anointing on my life i'm tired of faking word of knowledge i'm tired of just assuming who is grace because you know there must be a grace somewhere Look, bring me to a level of accuracy and truth That if people are healed through my hands, they were really healed. Not intimidated into testifying what did not happen. Genuine power is the cure for stage managing miracles. The cure for stage managing all sorts of things. Are you praying tonight? Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Psalm 92 and verse 10. But my horn, look up please. Shall thou exalt like the horn of a wild ox or the unicorn. And then he says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil, not old oil. I shall be anointed with the oil for the now. Not yesterday's oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The Bible is very clear. In 2 Timothy chapter 1. Please give it to us media. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. The Bible lets us know that all of us are called. Once you are a believer in Christ, you are called. It says, who had saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ before the world began. So there is no doubt that we are called. Preachers have just been taught that you are only called when you are getting into pulpit ministry, going to a school of ministry or a seminary. No, every believer in Christ is called called to represent the purposes of god but then please listen being called alone does not guarantee that you will have the anointing in second peter chapter one second peter chapter one and verse ten second peter chapter one and verse ten read with me please it's projected one to read wherefore the rather brethren Give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. 
For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Give diligence. You are called, but it does not mean you have proven your calling. It says to give diligence so that you will defend, validate, make your calling and your election sure. It's written in scripture that many are called and few are chosen. That scripture troubled me for many years. Until I began to study the ministry of Jesus. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Jesus never, never kept anybody away from his meetings, his programs. They were called. But when it was time for him to use certain people, he selected people carefully and sent them two by two. The fact that you are called does not mean you are chosen. You have to learn this. There are limitless possibilities that can happen in our lives if and when we are genuinely anointed. That when a believer possesses true spiritual power, the level of blessing that you will be to the world, I think it's only eternity that can record it. You know, I sit back many times when the testimonies are being shared and while people are trying to clap for me, I am very humbled and it helps me to respect God and to also respect the anointing. You are not a blessing if you lack spiritual power. It's true. You are not a blessing. There is no way you can be a blessing. It takes the power of God to bear the purposes of God. It takes more than good intention to bear the purposes of God. It takes genuine spiritual power for the purposes of God to be birthed within a generation, within a territory, within a dispensation. And so if we do not sustain the ability to host the power of God in our lifetime and our generation, we will not only endanger this generation, we will endanger our children and our children's children. There's no believer that will argue about the necessity of spiritual power. When you see God doing great things through a man, you don't say he's a prayerful man of God. You don't say he's a fastful man of God. You don't say he's a warded man of God. You say he's an anointed man. So subconsciously, we trace mighty works to the presence of this ability of the Spirit. Whether or not we know the Holy Spirit, whether or not we understand the dynamics of the anointing, one thing for sure we know is that if possibilities will happen in the class of God, it will take an agency higher than you. We know that. But the inability to walk in the experience of it is what continues to frustrate us. A man of God who has wise sayings and a good heart will have empty pews. No matter how sincere your heart is. It takes more than sincerity to be a blessing. Write this down. There are scriptural requirements to host the power of God. L let me say something. Please look up. Let me say something. You know, many times, I guess because they act a lot of Nigerian films and act a lot of movies where the power of God looks powerless in those films. They can act a Nigerian film where a pastor is struggling to lay hands on someone and the demon just maybe hits the pastor to fall down. With all due respect to the directors of those Nigerian movies, let me tell you, if you carry genuine spiritual power, the demons and hell know that you carry the genuine spiritual power. And all that thing that they are talking about, this is not you. This is the power of God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Those things are wonderful. We laugh through them, but they have helped us to diminish the potential of God's power. So a, a pastor prays for someone, they show light, 
entering the person and yet nothing changes it looks wonderful but we are reducing god to just become like an entity that is just a little higher than man that's not power many things that happen in the church is not power power has its proofs just like wisdom power is justified by its results you are not powerful just because people say you are powerful you are powerful because the results show that there is something that is working and as you rise in that power the results also change let me tell you this you know there is something wrong with you when you continue to recycle the same level of results for a long time it means nothing is being added to that grace you can literally use the presence of new results situations that would not have been part of your experience thank god for headache but for 10 years the only testimony is headache it means that's the only level of grace the day a new one comes god will send god knows what he put on you so he will send the people the challenge is that we keep claiming we have it then we draw the people by ourselves and when they come we give them nothing there is a price to host the power of god our generation does not like this one word price the moment you mention price price of fuel price of food price of anything people hate it once you mention words like scholarship free this and that people just like it because it seeks to give an idea like there is no effort on your own part but let me tell you this listen there is a real price for spiritual power i don't want to lie to you my brothers and my sisters there is a real price for spiritual power if you're a man of god learn this settle this once and for all there is a real price more than laying of hands listen to me more than just carrying an oil blessed by a man you respect i'm not saying those things are wrong please don't misunderstand me more than carrying a preacher's mantle and choking it at the back of your pocket forever there is a real price for spiritual power and i will just state one of it and then we'll take our time to pray tonight i truly truly want us to get results not just to get results in our lives but to also become genuine result producers praise the lord proverbs 23 hidden in that scripture is a very powerful expression of the demand the requirement Let's see where we can stop tonight. Verse 26. My son, give me your heart. Let's stop there. My son, give me your heart. Now, imagine that I come to you and I say, give me your heart. I understand, give me your wallet. Pastor, I understand. Give me your shoe. My son, I want to bring you to a realm, but give me your heart. Your heart here does not just talk of what is locked up inside your chest. No. It's another way of saying, my son, give me yourself. My son, give me your life. Listen to me. We have taught for many years that all it takes to be anointed is to pray. I believe. Is to fast. I believe. Is to be holy and pure. I believe. Is to be to sing, worship, play worship, charge the atmosphere. I believe. Go to church. I believe. Submit to spiritual authority. I believe. But let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, and hear me very well. I know what I'm talking about. You see this law? 
my son give me your heart not your prayer not your fasting not your worship every other activity in pursuit of power is a waste and it is futile if this does not happen your heart your heart your heart this is the first price of real spiritual power your heart talks of everything that represents your value everything that represents your basis of confidence he says give me it's very dangerous to want the anointing there is a price now sometimes men of god and please if you're a pastor here let's be sincere with members of course you can't say everything at every level to everybody but if you want to really help people be sincere sometimes the way a man of god will go through a price and then now you tell the members don't worry anything you can do you is it will not work that way you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth there is a price and the price number one is your heart your heart give me your heart the end time anointing will only come on men and women listen let me tell you this please come come stand here watch this let me explain something very quickly you see when you get born again or what you call saved look up please when this gentleman responds to an altar call usually when we lead them we now say give your heart so lord jesus i give you my heart god knows what we are trying to say but that's really not what happens salvation is not a man giving god his heart salvation is a man receiving the life of god please listen carefully there is no giving god your heart in salvation there is receiving his life the product of the substitutionary sacrifice of christ when you begin to talk of giving your heart for god this is where this is the realm of service and power that's where you give god your heart you can receive god's life and not give him your heart it's true it's true please follow what i'm saying that it is possible to receive the life of god you are saved genuinely you're a child of god but then when you now want to be effective to be a battle axe an ambassador an envoy of power he's giving you his heart or his life is not enough you must get to a point where your own life now as a drink offering will have to be poured this is where many believers do not they cannot subscribe to that because of the difficulty that comes anybody who tells you giving god your heart is easy lied to you in fact the holy ghost has to help you achieve that i i am convinced that nobody has the power within himself to give god his heart you only have the power to allow god help you lay it down preachers hear me we continue to admire anointed people and sometimes we are carried away by the little ministerial paraphernalia and all of these things more than those things i'm showing you what works you can listen to any man of god's message you want you can copy how any man of god talks and the body language whatever but if this has not happened to you that this your heart has not touched the altar of god forget about being used by god in this end time you can call yourself into ministry you can do anything you want to do but sooner or later a generation will know you were not approved the greatest hindrance that i have known to receiving and hosting the power of god is not sin no i used to think so listen to me it is one word self 
self self this is what must be destroyed upon the altar hmm. listen there is nothing you can do about sin you receive salvation but read your bible for self you must die and kill it when it comes to the issue of salvation and man being cut short from the glory of God, God says, man, step back. Jesus, come and walk. But there is no mention of that when it has to do with self. Destroying self. Mm -mm. It is a personal thing. The Holy Spirit only energizes you and grants you the grace. But dying, you must die. Please like what I'm teaching you. If it's genuine spiritual power you want to carry. You can bob your hair anyhow. You can wear the latest suit. But if it is power that you want to carry, there must be a track record of death. Let me tell you what self is. You see, the human nature, especially the fallen man, please look up. The fallen man is governed by one desire. Interest. What is in it for me? Are we together now? If I'm doing business with you, I can't do business with you until you tell me it, my own share. So that language of what is in it for me, my place, is wonderful when it has to do with dealing with humans. But when you want to do business with God, the language of I, the language of me, the language of myself, the language of this is how I want it. You must throw it. You, you must take it. Put it into your alabaster box. And take it like that woman. And serve it to Jesus. My heart. My will. My emotions. My everything I bring before the altar. Staying long in church does not automatically make you anointed. Attending prayer conferences does not automatically make you anointed. Wearing a jersey with the picture of Apostle Joshua Selman does not automatically make you anointed. Please, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I know that there are ministries that, you know, have all of this. That's, I'm, I'm just trying to contrast something. If you like, put a message under your pillow. If you like, put a picture inside your bag. There is a level of covering and grace that you can receive from those things. But for you to be genuinely, personally anointed, this surrender must be complete. If you start and it does not finish, it will still not come. You don't start the process of surrender and then believe that God is convinced because you have started. He must watch it until self becomes ashes. The ashes is the raw material for making the power. That ashes, self. Listen to what I'm telling you. Our generation hates sacrifice. The moment you talk of sacrifice, the moment you talk of anything that creates a constraint, the average person in our generation will be angry. I don't want this. We like convenience. And nothing is wrong with that. Except that when it has to do with transforming a generation and to represent the face of God's dealings to a generation, there is a huge price. Are you getting what I'm sharing with you now? Before prayer, before fasting, before any and all of these things, God looks at you and yourself, your ambition, your desire to be great, your desire to be a celebrity. Look up, please. Even your desire to be anointed must be crucified for you to be anointed. Until it no longer becomes a desire, that's when you are qualified to have it. Please help them. Your desire... To be a pastor your desire to be a geo your desire to be a mama prophet prophetess apostle and all of these things
God just stands by in his love and his mercy, sorry, but he continues to watch you. Is self that has driven many people to lock themselves for one week. I went somewhere and I preached and the power of God did not move. Lord, I can't take this embarrassment again. And God is watching. He's watching self pray. He's watching your body get lean. But self is sitting on the throne. And God says, no, I don't do that kind of business with you. While you sit down and hear them talk about a man of God and the great things that are happening, you sit and you are inspired. Very nice. Moved by it. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I, I must have that testimony too. There is a relationship between death and glory. There is a relationship between death. I'm telling you this. The greatest resistance to true spiritual power is self. I desire my own agenda. So I use God as a vehicle to achieve my own agenda. I want fame. I want the praises of men. I want money. I want accolades. And I searched around and found out that the most effective mechanism to achieving that is God. So I become famous through God. I become this through God. And God says, no. That's not the way it works. There are many, many, many Christian activities today that are just expressions of self. Listen to what I'm telling you. Self. They look spiritual. They sound spiritual. They carry a regalia of spirituality. But let me tell you, God is not in it. God and self cannot coexist. One must dethrone itself for the other. It's like the ark standing with Dagon. 90% of the motivation behind many things people do, that includes us preachers, is self. Self. We want self to be glorified. Even when we are saying, oh God, take all the glory, he knows it's a lie. Hidden somewhere in our heart, the desire to outshine, the desire to beat down others like a competition. And while he's watching our hearts, we continue to flatter and convince ourselves that we can maneuver our way into his power. And he just stands back. Not out of anger. He's restrained by his honor to his principles. And he stands there and continues to watch us. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Listen. When God wants to build you, when you get saved and he introduces you to the Holy Spirit, I've told you this. The first assignment is not to give you rema. The first assignment is not to start giving you visions and prophecies. The first assignment is death. How does a plant grow? You carry a seed, a seed that is good, and then you take it to the soil. And don't even pity the seed. While you drop the seed and it's there in moisture, you cover it and you are happy. You, you stop that seed from seeing light and you leave it there alone. Think of the loneliness that happens to that seed. Think of the absence of light, the suffocation. And yet you keep coming every day and you are watching. And out of that, the seed is helpless on the ground. But in that helplessness, that's when the strength starts to rise. After a few days, something starts happening the seed does not even know it carries that power the moment the seed dies it finds out that it just came alive again and finds out that death is not a thing it's a door it leads somewhere you can follow a door called death and come out into a realm where you will see jars different jars standing near different doors 
for every door of death there is an oil that is waiting for you and so with those oils are a list of the possibilities listen to me that when you stand in the realm of the spirit you will be shown doors and then you will see jars on every door alongside what can happen lord i want to raise people from the wheelchair he says come this is the oil that is responsible for that outcome but this is the door that leads to the oil and he said ah oh god i'm not ready i'm i can't if it's this door because sometimes the doors are small they are not like doors that you jump they are doors that you have to stretch some doors will enjoy you to pass but when you do pass you will carry something a generation cannot deny let me tell you my brothers and my sisters truly speaking i tell you the truth the way to power is death the way to genuine power the oil of god upon a man is not the oil in a bottle you can carry the oil in a bottle pour it on your head go and meet every man of god in the world to put his hand inside no the angel of the lord will lead you through doors lord i want to be the voice of a generation i want to be the face of god represented to a generation he says come this is the oil for this generation you said you want it yes sir you said you see that thing that looks like a hole is actually a door if you can pass to it when did you learn that you received the anointing cheaply ask elisha elisha continues to follow elijah look at the constraints look at the rigor from bethel gilgal everywhere down to jordan and that man was looking for something we teach many things about the anointing but we leave the most important part oh i'm good i'm a nice person I'm a wonderful believer. I love God. I have a... All that is nonsense. It will never bring you the anointing. It is no replacement for death. There are many good people whose self is still alive in them. Self is not something that leaves a man automatically. God must kill it. Hmm. Self is the circumcision required for power. The same way you circumcise a male child when you give birth to him. The spiritual circumcision for power is death. My son, give me your money. Give me your reputation. Give me your sleep. Give me your time. Give me your ego. Give me the praises of men. Give me your intellect give me your future give me your um, ah, god is too much but you said you wanted to be used by me i'm still listening i'm not done give me your wife give me your husband give me your first to last born lord i will give you two and take two no sir give me all of them if it is not all then forget about god a herbalist can say bring two now after 10 years we'll negotiate god says all that's the price for now right there give me the conference give me the members give me the songs give me the sermons give me the clothes give me the accolades give me the honorariums give me everything and he said lord what am i left with again and he says me that's all you have left if you have god and any other thing you are not yet dead it must be him alone so he keeps saying give me you think he's collecting it he's throwing it away so that he becomes the one and only ah. i show you the way to the anointing later on he will see one or two things close to you again and say uh, 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 i'm no longer alone now i've seen a new car you bought give me the car and he said lord if i give me does not mean sow it uh -uh. give
give me means bring it under my influence give me the nmpc job oh lord you know i'm a big boy now when i was poor i had time now i'm busy and god says that's it man of god when you had two members there was not much now you have a crowd give me your members he said lord i will give you the poor ones and keep the rich ones he said no sir give me everybody okay i will give you the rich and take the poor no sir when god wanted to demand people to come out of egypt pharaoh was negotiating let some go and some stay god said mm -mm, everybody look let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters let me teach you something about god god is a merciful god god is a wonderful god but when it comes to the making of men god is such permit me to use the word an unemotional god when it has to do with the making you will be surprised to know dimensions of god that will scare you that he calls himself the potter while you are the clay and he's smashing the clay on the ground and he's the one who is full of compassion yet that clay is on the ground at the end you will know it was still messy while he smashed you mercy is not always about forgiveness it is also insistence that you become even when you are not ready for it please learn this god is giving value to our fasting and prayer do you know i tell you sincerely and i don't mean to brag I, I continue to watch believers and preachers. I, I don't criticize the body, but I watch with shock and wonder the dishonor that people have for dead vessels. I tell you, all men are not the same. Some men are men plus self. Others are men plus God. So you carry your ambition like a cross. You carry everything on your head. Up you are going to Golgotha. Pastor Alpha, where are you going like this? You are such a great man. You are a preacher. Already the whole world is hearing you. And he shows you, he says, that's the place. That blood must touch the altar for real fire to come. There was never sacrifice of fire without the body on the altar. Dead or not alive. You will kill it and keep it there and then fire will come from heaven please let's be careful the way we are learning things about the anointing sincerely and respectfully so many people have been learning nonsense it's a non-negotiable condition if it is god that you want to see the way we are obsessed with control is my car my house you know you are alive to the degree to which you own things in the kingdom owners are rebels you don't own things in the kingdom the earth is the lord's and its fullness thereof the prodigal son had access but he wanted ownership from the day he owned things he started going down till he returned back to access no man is given ownership in this kingdom you are only given access god gives you a church the day you own it you pay the bills you take care of the members you manage the troubles that come from it I will build my church the day you build your own you will see the lopsidedness in the building many of you look at me please you gave God your voice to sing but you did not give him your pocket and you are surprised that your songs your songs want to bless people but the God of your pocket will block it others gave God your pocket but you did not give him some other things There are preachers that gave God their brain, but didn't give God their pulpit. No, God, you can have my Bible studies, but this pulpit belongs to me. And so it's only in the Bible study people are blessed. On Sunday, the people come and it's as if they are in a shrine. Everybody is looking for the latest everything, latest way of preaching latest way of singing you know one of these days my boys did something they have all these songs that they play different chants on their phone it looks like that's what is trending now and while they were 
I, I told them to do something and they forgot and they were playing it and I held their head. I said, this is what you people continue to do. You, you, you keep thinking it's just a ritual. You don't stay with God for him to walk on your head and so that you see transformation. A song is playing that is supposed to come from the throne room, but you are not behaving. Your brain is not acting like it's in the throne room. You want the anointing? Look at the door. The door that leads to it. I want to be able to pray for everybody afflicted and watch doors open. And God says, come, let me show you. There is the jar. There is the door. These are the possibilities. All by one and the same spirit. Only left to your level of sacrifice. My son, give me your heart. I'm sharing with you my experience with God. Let me tell you this. Until God shakes, bring that cup for me. No, the cup. You see how empty this cup is? This is how your life must become. To carry real, genuine power. You give God half of what is there and leave half. He says, no. How will you know that is the anointing then? They will all look the same. He will empty everything. Your reputation in that cup. Your knowledge. They will not be wasted. He's only reprioritizing it. So that when you stand, there is only one person that you see. When men clap for you, Apostle Joshua Selman, you thank God for the clap, but you are already dead. It does not sustain an ability to affect and influence you. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, money, fame, honor, until you have these things, you don't know what they can do to men. Oh God, bless me with money. I will serve you. Let me see the devil that will destroy me. Please keep quiet. You've not known what convenience at a level means. Where whether you pray or not, you feel secured. Who will oppress you? Hmm. There is a level to which you are anointed that it will almost look like you don't need God. Because even if you never preach again, what you have done before will continue to echo around. Self, self, sacrifice. Many men of God want power, but the fortitude for sacrifice is not there. Whatever wants to constrain you becomes a problem. No, I don't want it. I'm a geo, I'm a president, I'm a this and that. And God watches your heart. He says, No, this is not what I want. The heart of man is selfish, it is the selfishness in man's heart that is called wickedness. Man will use anything for his benefit, including God. Man will use anything. Friends, enemies, wife, husband, children. The women that ate their children, why didn't they die? Why didn't one woman volunteer and say, instead of two children dying, let me die, at least I'm an adult, you can eat me for a few days. Then the other adults die. They say, no. I love you, but I love myself and I will eat you if the need arises. The king that slew his son, why didn't he die? I'm showing you men. When Jesus came, he came with another philosophy. And they looked at him and said, don't you have an interest? How about Jesus? You see nice things and just leave them like that. Don't you have a reputation? Are you not protecting something? Are you not afraid to lose something? We are the scribes here. We are members of the Sanhedrin Council. We have a lot to protect. And Jesus didn't seem to be afraid of losing anything. And he began to teach them the economy of the kingdom. That we lose things when we try to keep them. But that in the kingdom we gain things by losing them. Whosoever keeps his life shall lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake, he says, shall gain it. They asked him one time and said, Master, we have left all. Oh, we have left all. I was a fisherman. 
I left everything to follow you. What is in this for me? He said, now let me answer you. That no man who lives father, mother, etc., etc., for my sake and the kingdoms, he said, but you will receive in this life. In this life. There is a sacrifice that brings genuine spiritual power. Luke chapter 22 and verse 42. And let's pray. My son, give me your life. Give me your wealth. Give me your honor. Give me your songs. Give me your sermons. Give me your accolades. Give me the praises. Jesus in Gethsemane. And he's saying, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, he said. Nevertheless. This is the language of a dead man. Nevertheless. Lord, I desire to be sleeping right now. But nevertheless, not my will. I don't desire to fast. I'm tired. You too, you see how I've been busy, oh God. But nevertheless. What did he say about wives in the Bible? He said, wives, submit yourselves to your own husband in how many things? So if you are the bride of Christ, come my dear, and the husband says to submit in an area, and he said, husband, I can submit in this and that except that you have become like Vashti. Vashti was not totally rebellious. At least she was in the palace. But she had her own agenda in the palace. And the people warned the king. Said this is a bad reference. Dismiss this woman. Esther gained the heart of the king by losing her reputation. That's how she really, really saved Israel. If I perish, that's her version of nevertheless. Let me show you how we rise in this kingdom. Nevertheless. Lord, if it's my money you want, nevertheless. Ignorant people will insult you and say, continue to act like fools. Let church turn your head around. Lord, if it's the worship ministry you want, I will give it to you. It's not a life and death. Do you know religion will hold any other thing and throw any other thing out, including God? I can tell you that you are alive in yourself by the ego that is attached to the things that we do. There are pastors who, if they miss one service on the pulpit, there must be an informant around to give them details of what happened. Was there any sign of rebellion? I'm not ready to toy with my ego. That's the problem. When you are alive in yourself, you will know it's hard to live by yourself. But when you die and you become resurrected from his life, you will see the ease and the excellency of living by the life of God. Is someone getting what I'm saying? There is a price for the anointing. The price is not just prayer. The price is not just fasting. The price is not just moral excellence, my dear people. The price is death call it what it is not fainting you faint you are not dead death 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 when jesus the body was lying down there it took the spirit to come and resurrect him back there are some of you here if one thousand naira falls down you can miss church because you are looking for that money don't tell me you are dead. Listen, death is not irresponsibility. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The attachment to things. My reputation. What did he say about Joshua Selman? Do you know who I am? You are still alive. So you continue to defend yourself for life. And it's hard to defend yourself. Tonight, we are here to obtain the power to lay it down. The power to lay it down. The power to lay it down. You see all these things that happen when I just come and stand here. Let me tell you sincerely, my brothers and my sisters. 
is not just some special anointing. I thank God for his unique operation. But you can measure your death. It's measurable. I stand before the God of heaven and may he forgive me if I'm lying that there is nothing in my life today that I cannot give God. May God show me that one thing now as I stand that I cannot give him and it will leave this night, not tomorrow. Call me Nana Kane. Call me Nana Kane. Call me Nana Kane. Call me Nana Kane. Yeshua Hamashia. I say it everywhere I go to preach. If the Lord tells me, son, this is your last sermon as a man of God, as I throw this mic, even if it's an angel that gives me a mic, I will not collect it again. My life will not be useless if I stop being a preacher. Do you have that much death to lay that down? And let me tell you, you don't answer by saying yes. You answer by obedience to what you would demand. If anybody tells you God is just playing games with you, he's just testing you and then at the end you say, ah, no, 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 don't kill it. You are joking. If he's God, he will watch that ashes burn in your presence. Was he not the one who made man from the dust? So when he returns you to the dust, he didn't lose. He can still make you back. That fire must roast your reputation. Roast your sense of your ego, self. Now that I'm preaching, what is in it for me? I let them know I am better than this. Let them know I'm better than this. You can fast all your life. You will not find power. God sees my heart. There is only one reason why I do the things that I do. I truly seek to see Jesus exalted. This is what I do all my life. I honestly have no business looking for a reputation. If I wanted a reputation, I'm not too dull. I think I know what to do. The love of God is what constrains you. Sometimes I stand here. There should not be anything that you cannot lay down. You go to my house this night, right there. You enter my kitchen, you will see my food there, waiting for you. Because there was no time. My mind was, I don't know. God's people have to be blessed. I, I don't have time. When will I start eating this? I was already looking at time. I have to get up and come. I didn't even know when the time had gone. Let them die. Ah, am I Jesus? Let me sit down and eat. And he looks at you. And you want the anointing for nations nobody will beat you but life will show you that you didn't pass through some doors so while you have come here tonight you have come here to receive that is true but you have also come here to die man of god you have come here to die not just to get a name when you die it will no longer matter where you sit down whether you sit in front here or you sit outside it will no longer matter whether they call you joshua selman or apostle joshua say I'm, I'm not i'm not a, don't play games with me I've, I've, I've not fasted in vain john almost got it but he missed it at a point that I may decrease so that he will increase. John was getting it. Making his calling and election sure. But he got to the prison and offense. The loneliness that comes with death can be painful. You want to stay alive. John said, so this is what it's about. Listen, if you don't know God, he always looks like he's using you. And we say, God, use me. But when you really die, what he's doing is that he's, he's exalting you beyond your wildest imagination. If you don't know the ways of God, you will think God is a wicked God. 
So all I do is just to continue to serve you. Your wish is my command. Am I that stupid? And God says, it's your choice. I don't force you. But then your possibilities will show your limitation. There are men in this kingdom that will not need to pray for God to answer. Their sacrifice prays all the time. Even while they are sleeping, their altar is praying. There are men who God has vowed a vow upon because of something, some sacrifices that they have done. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. There are men who God has vowed that he will never pass through a land and ignore them in their lifetime. This is the place of power, my brothers and my sisters. This is the place where the lifting of your voice is like the evening sacrifice. The heavens will prove to men that God is there. That when you show up in a place, it's not by jamboree, I am a this, I'm, no, 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 no. If it's not there, it's not there. It's as simple as that. And while all that is happening, you stand in awe and say, God, so this is what you can do. And God says, you've not seen anything yet and while men are praising you you turn back and say lord this is to you he says you are doing this to me you now have a chance to shine and you are saying lord i take my will afresh and i hand over to you he says you just pass through a door get set for another lifting this revival thing we cry about is not just prayer and fasting true revival is an initiation into death period if death does not happen a revival did not happen if conferences happen and you do not die whatever happens if it does not lead to death i am telling you a revival did not happen that's why we keep doing revivals every year and at a point it will become like a ritual this year's revival will you come you say yes i will come and after the revival on the last day all that people are doing is sharing the grace and run to get a can go revival is when you die the world will come and feed off your death, but your death will give them life. Paul said, so then death walks in us. Death preachers, hear me. Hear me. It is death in you that gives life to those who come. You are not just going to stretch your hands on someone and say, be blessed. And then he's like, God is not stupid. Please, let's respect God. He's not stupid. Until that death happens. And the opening of your mouth, principalities and powers will know this is how you will be a blessing. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. I don't know if this is an exhortation tonight. A powerful key on the anointing. Look at me. You have not seen true prosperity until you die. Sometimes all these five, ten nairas that fly around that distract us from God die financially and see what resurrection can do die to ministry and you will not have the time to honor the invitations that come we gain things by losing them listen to me we gain things by losing them you have a ministry when you forget about ministry and you focus on him Yeshua Hamashiach O Mina Yeshua Hamashiach O Mina Listen I want you I don't want us to be emotional just run around shouting as if you don't know what you are doing but in the next two or three minutes, I don't know how you are going to talk to God and say, Lord, I don't want to lie to you tonight. Self is very alive in me. I don't know what you are going to do on me tonight. But let that spiritual circumcision, oh God, there are some things I cannot give you. I love you with all my heart, but I, I may not be able to give you my wife. I may not be able to give you my child. I may not be able to give you my church. I may not be able to give you my job. I may not be able to give you my reputation. Lord, I love you, but I love my reputation too. 
it took me a long time to get it and I don't plan to lose it without a fight lift your voice and pray like Jacob take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord anoint my everything pray I yield my everything I release my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord pray cry to God in a language that is only for you and him you are not praying tonight as koinonia you are not praying as a man of God you are not praying as a celebrity you are you are in the threshing floor of Naboth tonight Please pray. Shela barada gadabalash. There is nothing I cannot give you, oh God. I have battled to give you my reputation, but take it tonight. My certificate has been useless because I didn't give it to you. Now I give it to you. Make meaning out of it for me. I've tried to look for a job by myself because it is my job. Lord, take the certificate. It's yours. Take the promotion. It's yours. Whatever you don't give God cannot bless you. Whatever you don't give God cannot bless you. You're making way for the anointing. Find comfort, oh God. Let me become your resting place. Let there be no difference between my life and the throne. You can sit on any one of them and still find comfort. Let it please you to rest upon my life. The same way you will rest upon your throne. Take all of me, all of me. Use all of me, all of me. Just a few minutes and we're done tonight. You cannot be anointed until you are dead. Man of God, until you are dead. For when you are dead, then you become alive. You can carry genuine power that will shake the gates of territories. The children are beyond your control because they are still your children. Hand them over to him. Lord, I'm only a steward today and hence they are your children. It is your house. It is your car. You are too responsible to leave your car without maintenance. You are too responsible to leave your house without maintenance. Lord, she's my wife, but she's your wife first. Lord, I'm her husband, but I'm your wife too. 
this is your church they are your members the influence is yours the messages are yours the honorariums are yours let there be nothing in our lives that we cannot give you you have been looking for your admission your admission so you will qualify and yet not get it when it becomes his admission through you he knows what to do please pray Take over, take over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Oh God, if you cannot open that door, let it remain closed. If you cannot lift me, may I remain small. If you cannot bless me, may I remain unblessed. If you cannot bring members to your church, oh God, let the pews remain empty. If you cannot give me children, may I remain without children. If you cannot give me a wife, may I remain unmarried. If you cannot give me a husband, may I remain unmarried. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember the Lord speaking to me years ago. I've told you many times. He said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. It's true. Listen, the key is to hide behind the cross. That's how to be famous. Don't stand in front of the cross. You didn't die on it. He only grafted you through it. So you stand behind so that the world will see him. The one who died. It is through the lens of his death they see you. But when you hide Jesus so that men will see you, the blood on that cross will fight you. You become an enemy to the cross even though you are a man of God. You cannot stand and block Jesus because you are looking for fame. They are looking at the cross like the brazen altar so that they will leave. You now come with your ego and block the cross and say, look at me. And the blood of the son that also speaks mercy can speak judgment. But when you hide behind the cross and say, world, there is nothing special about me except for the fact that I'm connected to this man you see and the father looks at you and say you, ha you, have, you have an option to push Jesus out you not only stand behind the cross you now lift the cross high enough and say like Aaron and her I will be the lifter may they see him
They say, but you are the one that prayed for me. You say, just keep your eyes there. And while you lift the cross, you will find out that you are rising too. I've said forever, let Jesus be glorified. Thank God for the honor that you show me. I know that you love me so much and I'm indebted to you for life. But let me tell you sincerely, this man that you see is nothing more than a man. The supernatural dimension of this man is the cross. Listen to what I'm telling you. That's the secret. The prayers of this man is not the prayers of a spirit. It's the prayers of a man. It's the answer of the one on the cross that makes the prayer of the man look powerful. Last prayer point. Whatever is trying to be you, oh God, in my life, I dethrone it this night. Lift your voice and pray. Whatever. Whatever has found its way to be you in my life. No matter how it got there. Whatever has tried to be you in my life. I dethrone it. Whatever has tried to be you. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Thank God for the fame. But fame is not the same thing as Jesus. Prosperity is not the same thing as Jesus. Miracles is not the same thing as Jesus. Influence and increase is not the same thing as Jesus. He is Lord above and Lord over all. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the loudest praise to the King. We give you the highest, highest praise to the King. We give you the loudest. Here's the part of the song that I like. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the worship. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. I give you. I give you. I give you the highest praise. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. To healer, to healer, to is my highest praise. I give you, I give you. You have taken all my shame. You have taken all disappointments. I've taken all limitations. You've taken all the worries. You've taken all the stress. You've taken all the pain. You have made them yours. Listen, listen. You never give him the glory and he leaves the shame with you. He takes everything. He says, bring it. The glory and the shame, bring it. The pain, the disappointment and the honor, bring it. He does not just take the glory and then leaves you with the shame. Uh -uh. He wants everything. Hand it over. Listen. We have just two minutes tonight and then we're done. Listen to me carefully. The woman with the alabaster box. You know, I studied this for many years. And all that it looked like was that she brought something expensive. No. That woman took her pain. 
she took her frustration. It was not just the spiking ad. It was also her sorrow. She turned everything in the vase. That's why she didn't pour it. She broke it. Lord, I don't want it again. Both the spiking ad and the pain, I hand it over. And in the next two minutes, like the woman with the alabaster box, don't just pour your glory in the bottle. Pour your pain too. Pour the sickness, the terminal disease, the prayer request. Take it and put it in that bottle and hand it over to him in the next two minutes. Lord, I hand it over to you. The financial struggle, let it go with my worship too. I add it to my worship. I add my pain to my worship. I add my sacrifice to my worship. I add my disappointment to my worship. It will go together. I give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. I give you worship, worship, Ninaimaka, Naimaka, Ninaimaka, Sujada, Ninaimaka, Naimaka, Ninaimaka, yeah, I give you, I give you, I give you. We not only give you the highest praise, we also give the highest pain, the highest sorrow, the highest disappointment. The reason why I don't sleep, I give it to you too. That's what worship means. Worship is not just giving God all the blessings. It's also transferring the pain in the bottle and releasing it to him. Hallelujah. I want you to keep this principle and use it again and again in your life. This is how your secret place should be. A place of exchange. Your weakness for his strength. Your earthly wisdom for his divine wisdom. Worship is not just about singing songs. Worship is about transference. It's proof of humility. Lord, this financial load is bigger than me. So I sing it to you. I use my song like a tray. And on that tray are all my worries. I hand it over to you. I decree and declare to you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. That as a result of tonight's surrender many of you will return back and find out that you not only surrendered your heart you also surrendered your limitations and that means you are opening up to a higher dimension of grace a higher dimension of spiritual power i declare restoration of gifts and dimensions that have been lost dimensions in the spirit visions operations of the spirit that used to be there but now have been eroded because of your situations let there be a restoration like the hair of samson and i pray sincerely tonight may strange miracles begin to happen in our lives The visions that you have been crying that God will give you. Blueprints of the next level of life and ministry. I stand by the spirit and I declare. Let the scroll that carries the vision of your destiny be delivered to you this night. Let the scroll where it has been written. The things concerning your next level. May your eyes see it in your sleep. 
may your eyes see it when you are awake may your eyes see it as you walk in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you even beginning from tonight may you begin to sense heavier dimensions of god's presence upon your life may your meetings be characterized by strange dimensions of the spirit in the name of jesus christ i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching